It was recently expressed to me that we're starting to get a feel for how the Trello pricing plans work. I did a video about that a while ago, if it's still confusing for you, because I know it can be a little bit confusing. But there's still some confusion as far as what you get at the standard level, which is the $5 per user per month, or at the premium level, which is $10 per user per month. So that's what I thought I would do in this video is just put it all together in one place as of right now, which is middle of 2025. This is, of course, always subject to change. But as of right now, this is the breakdown of what you get when you upgrade to standard and then again when you upgrade to premium. But before we dive into this, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a tutorial or upload. Okay, so I do have a list in front of me. I'm going to be looking down a lot in this video because I want to make sure I don't miss any of them. And I have to tell you, like, I, I mean, I know that I don't know everything there is to know about Trello. There is way too much to know for that to be true. But I still discovered some things as I was doing my research that I didn't even know were possible. And honestly, some of them I don't know if I will actually use them, but just the fact that they exist I don't know that I would have found them if I hadn't specifically done this research. So I want to make sure to call those things out for you here. But when you're in a free Trello workspace, well, first off, let me roll back for a quick second. It is very important to be clear that when it comes to Trello, unless you are at an enterprise level, and that is something that if you're watching my channel, you probably are not, because that is typically for larger corporations, bigger companies where you're going to have lots of employees. If you're a solo or small business owner like me, then you're probably never going to get to that point. So it's important for you to recognize that when you upgrade your Trello, you are not upgrading your entire account. You are upgrading workspace by workspace. And that might seem bad for you. That might seem like, well, why isn't it just the whole account? It would be so much easier if all of my workspaces were upgraded. But it actually can work in your favor. And I'm going to call that out for you a little bit later when I talk about some of these features, how I am taking advantage of the fact that it is workspace by workspace versus it being the entire account. So let's dive into this. If you're in a free workspace, you've probably already figured out a couple of these things. You only get a maximum of 10 boards in a free workspace. But hopefully you've noticed that there's a very high limit to how many free workspaces you can have in your account. So this does not at all limit how many boards you can have. It just limits how many are in each workspace, which does become important later. <laughs> Another limit of the free workspace is how many collaborators you can invite in. You can only have 10 collaborators. This actually came out as a new thing, like maybe two years ago now. It was right around the time I did the original video I referenced uh, in the intro here because it became a huge deal. People were freaking out. Imagine that, people freaking out over changes at Trello. But they were freaking out because it really did impact the way that a lot of people were using Trello. But honestly, my motto here is always, you just have to get a little creative. It's not ruining what you're doing. You just have to rethink it a little bit. So that was another, is another limitation of a free workspace that you only get 10 boards and you only get 10 collaborators. You also have fewer automation workflow runs. You can create as many workflows as you want, but you're gonna run out of runs. And so you're gonna start seeing that little, oh, you've used 80% of your quota this month. It's limited. And that is one of the first things that started to personally move me towards a paid plan, just FYI. But that's because I maybe use a little bit of automation in my setup. And then another thing that is a limit there is you're limited to the file size that you can attach to a card. So if you're trying to attach a photo or something, you might have to go into another program and kind of condense that photo so that it will be uploadable into your Trello board. Oh, and then you don't have access to things like custom fields, which is actually kind of a big deal. You also don't have access to the different ways of viewing your data. So everybody gets the Kanban style. We all get the card view, the boards, but you don't get access to things like the table view or the timeline view or even the calendar view. But there are lots of ways to work around that, right? We've talked about all that kind of stuff on the channel before, so I'm not going to get into too many details on that. For example, just using the free calendar power-up allows you to see your board in that calendar view. So 
it's there are a lot of ways to kind of work around some of those limitations at the free level. But let's say you've reached the point where for whatever reason, you've decided it's time to upgrade. Maybe you need more automation workflows. Maybe you need custom fields. Maybe you really want to be able to use the list collapser that they released. Like, gosh, was it like a year ago now? As well as list colors. Like these are all things that are possible reasons that you might find yourself needing to upgrade. And yes, this opens up a whole new world of possibilities, but it comes with its own new limitations and things that you need to be aware of. So let's talk about a few of those. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the standard plan. And this is that $5 per user per month plan. This is great for small teams, especially if you're just upgrading for yourself and you don't include anybody else in any of your boards and things like that. This is probably going to be the sweet spot for you for a while. You may still hit a point where you want to get to that premium level. I did. but you may or may not need that when you're a solo or small business owner. So let's talk about what you get when you upgrade to standard. You get unlimited boards in that workspace. So this may now turn it into a situation where, especially if it's just you, you don't need all your other workspaces. You can simply migrate all your boards, which yes, you can do, and it might take a little bit of time, but it is absolutely doable to migrate your existing boards into your paid workspace. And then you just manage them inside of that workspace. The limitation here, and we'll talk about this a little more when we get to premium, is that you don't have a real clear way to organize your boards themselves within that workspace. So unless you use like a numbering convention or some sort of naming convention with your boards, it can make things harder to find. You'll have to use that search feature a lot more or star the boards that you're going to use a lot but allows you to bring all of them into one workspace and then they all get the same features and functionality, okay? You also get unlimited collaborators, but I'm gonna put a little asterisk right here because yeah, you get unlimited collaborators. You can invite as many people as you want, but you do need to be careful when you do that because now they're all in one workspace. And if you invite somebody to more than one board, you are now gonna see them show up on your billing as a user. So here's where sometimes we got to get a little bit creative. Here's where, like I was saying earlier, it can actually work in your favor that this is at the workspace level and not at the account level. Because now you have the possibility of creating that second board in a free workspace if it doesn't require all of the paid features that you have in the primary workspace. You can create it in a free workspace and give that same person access to both boards without them becoming someone that you're paying for. Now, there may come times, and this is where I'm at right now, where you're in a situation that, you know, that both of those boards need to have some of the premium features. So then what do you do? You can pay for that user. And if it's just one user, it may not be a huge deal. But if there's maybe a couple of people that might need access to more than that one board, then uh, that's going to start to get pricey. And you're not really going to want to be paying for these outside collaborators in your internal boards. So what did I do? I did kind of a, a cost value analysis here and I made the decision that it made more sense for me to upgrade two workspaces. I know, bear with me, just come with me for a second. I upgraded both workspaces so that all of those people who needed access to both of those boards that needed premium features had access in this workspace and then they had access to one board in this workspace. Instead of me paying for licenses for all of those people, I'm just paying a double license for myself. It sounds counterintuitive, but it's actually smarter for the budget. So there are ways around some of these things. Like I said, you just need to be creative in how you set things up and really think things through before you just start adding people to boards. Another thing that you get with that standard plan is now your limit for automation workflows has expanded. You now get a thousand automation workflows in a month. I'm not gonna lie, I've capped that out before too, <laughs> but you might not for a long time. If you're just using basic automation workflows, like keeping a, like, a to-do doing done process moving smoothly or you know setting up some recurring tasks for yourself, you're not likely to run through a thousand workflows in a month. Now, if you're setting up a lot of workflows and having to test them a lot, you're going to go through them a little bit faster. So keep that in mind when you're setting up new stuff. But 
it's it's a pretty generous level for their first level of the paid plans. Then you also, at the standard level, get access to advanced checklists. This is where you're able to kind of really use those checklists as subtasks that can be assigned to someone else or even given a due date that has a reminder. So this really opens up a whole lot, and this is just at that $5 level. You also get access to custom fields, which is a big one. Now you can really break out that data that you need to track on your cards. It doesn't all have to be you know, shoved into the description or have just a ton of labels on your cards in order to indicate certain things. You can add even just simple custom fields like status, priority, stuff like that that comes in really, really handy. You also get access to larger attachments. So you can upload at this level 250 megabytes per file, which still doesn't get you like a big old video or something like that. But honestly, you wouldn't want to upload something that big straight into your Trello account anyways. It's probably going to slow things down on the back end. And that's, it's not necessary. Store big files like that somewhere else and just put a link in your Trello card. Now here's something that I did not know you get Honestly, I didn't know it existed in Trello because I just, I never ran across it before, but this is something you also get at that standard level and it's saved searches. So if you find yourself going up into that top search bar and searching the same thing a lot, whether it's things that are assigned to you or things that are due in the next week or whatever it is that you might be searching across all your boards, then you can actually go in at this level and create a saved search so that it's easily filterable and makes it just that much quicker to search for the things that you need on a regular basis. And then the last thing that you get at this standard level is the workspace admin controls. Now your admin has a little bit more control over managing boards. They can even manage private boards and things like that. So it really creates a little bit of a layer of, I guess, professionalism and security and organization across all of your workspace. You also get access to that list collapsing I was talking about earlier and list colors when you're at this standard level. Okay, so that was a lot of new stuff that you get at that lowest paid tier plan. So what would make you upgrade to the premium level? Why would you pay double? Well, you might not need to. Honestly, Trello has given a lot of their core and kind of more premium functionality at that lower level, that standard level. But depending on how you're using Trello, depending on how big your team is and what kind of work you're tracking in Trello, you may still find that you need the premium plan. So let's go over what you get when you get to that premium level. At premium, you now remove the cap on your automation workflows. You now get unlimited workflow runs. You never have to worry about how much stuff you're setting up and how much you're streamlining in your system. That is definitely a big one for me. You also get access to all of the other board views. So you now can see your boards in calendar view, in timeline view, which if you don't know timeline view, but you're more of like a project management person, think of it like your Gantt view, okay? You also get dashboard view, which I'm gonna be real honest. I don't see a whole lot of benefit from dashboard view. This is one that I'm not really sure if it's quite there yet, <laughs> okay? So don't upgrade specifically just for dashboard view because I have a feeling you'll be a little bit disappointed if you do. You also get table view, which allows you to view it kind of like a spreadsheet view. And then you get access to map view. So if you are using locations in your cards, if you're mapping out, I don't know, like a travel plan or something like that, you would actually be able to see it all on the map if you're in the premium plan. You also get access to more admin and security features, so more control over the workspace settings and permissions and stuff like that. This is also the level where you're able to create board templates. So if you've ever used one of my templates, that's because I'm in premium and I'm able to turn them into an actual template. Now, to be fair, if it's all internal, you can simply make a board that acts as a template and then your team can go in and copy that board. But that can still be a little bit dangerous, even if it's an internal board and an internal team looking at it, because they would be able to change that board. And so they might accidentally go in and change something about it that you didn't even realize or definitely didn't intend. If you have access to templates, then you send them the link to the template. and All they can do is create a board from that template, right? So it does come in handy even when it's an internal team that you're sending it to. They also address the issue that I was mentioning at the standard level where if you're all in one workspace, now you just have 
a bunch of boards and you'd have to get creative to organize those boards and and not just make it just a massive just bleh, of boards right at the premium level they've added collections so now you can tag your boards with collections and then filter down when you're in looking at your workspace or you're looking at all of your boards you can filter down to those collections and just really hone in on the ones that you need in that moment another thing that you get at the premium level which this one i think can be kind of a big one depending on how you're using your boards but this is where you get access to being able to make people an observer on a board in standard and free the only things that you can do is make somebody an admin of a board or make them a member of a board which means they can edit and do pretty much anything with your board at this premium level you can make them an observer which to a large extent makes the board read only but you have some extra settings where you can determine whether or not observers are able to comment on cards which i tend to do because just because they're an observer and i don't want them to mess with anything doesn't mean i don't want them to be able to communicate and interact so that is something you get at the premium level which i think is pretty cool you also at this point have the ability to export your boards into csv which comes in very handy if you need to translate that data into any other systems like perhaps actually make a better dashboard of your data than the one that currently exists in Trello. And then the last thing that you get is priority support. So if you contact Trello support for any reason and you have a premium workspace, then you do get access to priority support. So I know that's a lot to digest. So I'm going to give you a little table here so that you can just see like real quick, all side by side, what you get at the standard and premium levels. Keep in mind, this is current as of the middle of 2025. So this is always subject to change. But a lot of this has been the same for the last like five years or so, at least that I can remember. So it's not likely to change massively in the near future. Now, is there anything that I missed? Is there anything that you've discovered at the standard or premium level that I didn't talk about? Let me know in the comments. The online tools for your business do not need to be complicated and overwhelming. It's time to let it be easy. I hope that you liked that video and more importantly, that you found it helpful. And if you did, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel and sharing it with a fellow solopreneur. And make sure that you check out the description for links for how we can connect and maybe even work together.